Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Superpower User. My name is Stanley. And since today is the first day you can publicly apply for the Apple Card, I wanted to take some time out and talk about the five top reasons why an Apple Card may be appropriate for you and why you may want to apply for one. Followed up with a couple of things you may want to watch out for before you apply for this card. So stay tuned. This is the third and final part of my videos on the Apple Card, and the first two parts being the live application and the unboxing. So if you want to take a look at that, I'll make sure to link that in the, down, in the description below or the end screen so you can check that out. I've had a couple weeks to use this card and to play around with it and experience it, and I've got five reasons why this card is unique compared to the competition and why you may want to use it. So at number five is the build quality. Uh, this is a titanium, solid titanium credit card, and you know it's unique on the market. There's nothing like it, basically. There's a handful of other metal credit cards, but there isn't one that's quite like this. This is solid titanium, and it's got a matte finish to it, and it feels very premium. Um, it's both light and heavy at the same time, and what I mean by that is it feels very solid and heavy, but at the same time, because of the size, it feels very light. And since it's made out of titanium, it's actually heavier than regular metal credit cards, but because of the size and the extra thickness, it tricks your brain into thinking it's very, very light. The laser etching on the card is very precise and it just feels amazing in the hand. At number four is the transparency of the payment system and the way the fees are handled. So late fees or uh, interest charges. I find it very interesting that Apple chooses to uh, show you exactly how much interest you're gonna be charged if you were to pay a specific amount that's not your full balance. Of course, you should always be paying your full balance you know, so that you're not getting charged any interest. But for whatever reason, if you can't pay the full balance, you have a little slider interface and you could choose exactly how much to pay and it tells you how much interest you're gonna be paying based off of that payment. And it also gives you little things like pay one third ahead to get ahead to, in order to reduce your full payment. Uh, these little tricks and tips to try to get you to pay the full amount or to minimize the interest charges. Um, I find that very interesting because credit card companies love it when you pay interest and fees on your credit card. And that's really how they make most of their money is on the interest fees. So uh, bravo to Goldman Sachs and Apple to, to get this information out to the user so that everything's a lot more transparent. And number three is the cash rewards program. So you get 1% on everything you purchase with the Apple card, 2% if you use Apple Pay, uh, either with the phone or the watch, and 3% on Apple products, Apple Store, Apple services, Apple anything. Uh, at 3%, this is actually a substantial amount of money because I don't think there's really any other credit cards out there that will give you 3% on a Mac purchase or an iTunes purchase. And even things like the Apple Upgrade program, that counts as the 3%. So if you're using the Apple Upgrade plan, you, know, you can put that on the credit card and you get 3% back for that. Also, this morning, I read that Uber has been added to that 3% category. So, you know, it is a little bit compelling why you may actually want the Apple Card for the cashback purpose. Lastly, the cashback that you get in the form of daily cash, that's kind of unique too, because you get uh, cashback every single day at the end of the day to be immediately usable uh, either with Apple Pay or the cash card. So. Uh, overall, it's not a bad program, especially for something that's free. And number two is the innovation that Apple brings to the credit card industry. So Apple uses machine deep learning to analyze the credit card charges that you know, are passed through the wallet, and it is able to spit out the exact name, company, location of the charges, rather than giving a long string of text and long string of uh, gibberish sometimes you find on your credit card statements, you're able to exactly know what the merchant was, what the category is, and even the location of the purchase. And that's very interesting because you also get a notification every time you, um, 
you make a purchase, you know, you get the amount, you know, the location. So you're very informed of your purchases. Now, granted, this isn't completely earth shattering because you have third party applications like Mint or, you know, personal capital or other applications that kind of ingest all of your financial data and kind of spits it out and, you know, gives it to you for you to read. But the, uh, it's kind of nice to just be able to have that all wrapped up within the wallet app and being able to easily glance at it. So it's, it's, it's not a bad interface. In fact, that brings us to the number one reason why I think, or personally why I'm using the Apple card. And it's the, uh, it has to do with the better visibility. And what I mean by better visibility is the ability to see exactly how much your total balance is, how much you spent this week, last week, previous week, and for the month, the different categories broken up into um, the different categories of services, uh, spending, entertainment, transportation, all the different categories, the color coded, and how it gives you the store name of everything and all the locations. It's just easy information at your fingertips. And like I said, uh, there are third party applications out there that do that, but they all require you to log in, to load up. And that's one of the main reasons why I really like the Apple Card and the Apple Wallet is because you know, you're, you, you unlock the phone and your phone already knows it's you. So when you just click on the Apple Wallet, it just brings it right up rather than having to go to Chase's app or Mint and having to rescan your face or punch in your pin ID and then load it up. It's really, really quick and it's all at your fingertips. And personally, uh, I, I know there's a handful of downsides to this Apple car, but I think having the ability to view your finances at a glance, uh, your day-to-day -day finances and your month-to-month -month finances at a glance um, and to be able to know exactly what's going on, I think that is worth some value. And that's the main reason why I am actually using the credit card. Now, you also can see the, which charges give you the cash back. You got the 1% on some charges, 3% on some other charges, 2%. It all shows it to you. It even tells you which charges were used with the credit card number and which charges were used you know, with either the card or the Apple Pay. So it's those whole interface with the uh, iPhone that really brings it all together and what makes the Apple Card very unique. Now granted, there are some downsides to this Apple Card and if I don't talk about any of those, this video is gonna be downvoted to hell if, if I don't. So my biggest gripe of the Apple Card is the fact that this can't be shared with another person, meaning the Apple Card can't be used with joint accounts. Uh, the C Apple Card is attached to the phone, and of course the phone is attached to one user, so uh, the sharing of an account cannot happen. Um, maybe in the future, Apple will allow you know, a couple to be able to share the same Apple Card and be able to see all the finances, but currently one card per user. My second issue with this car kind of makes the first issue just that much worse is the fact that you can't use third party software to ingest data to be able to display your personal finances, meaning applications like Mint or Personal Capital or any third party application out there that kind of displays your entire per finances of your different credit cards and bank accounts uh, does not work with the Apple Car. My guess is it's not a technical issue, but it's more of a security and privacy issue where Apple doesn't want to share that data with third party. And I don't know if they'll allow it in the future or if they're gonna be pushing out their own software. That'd be kind of interesting if they were to push out their own software, like a competition to mint. But um, currently there really isn't any way to track all your spending. So not only can you not have joint accounts, but you can't even use a third party to see all the joint accounts together uh, from the Apple Card. So that's kind of a double whammy. The third thing that I wanna talk about is of course the rewards. Um, and this is usually where most other people kind of knock on this card because uh, I did say that you know a 3% on Apple products is pretty good, but at the same time, Apple products isn't 
where you spend the majority of your money. So there's better credit cards out there for rewards, such as the City Double Cash Rewards card uh, that gives you basically 2% back on everything. And you know, 2% back on everything is almost better, is just straight up better than this card. Uh, there's also better travel cards out there. The American Express Platinum gives you 5% on travel. Uh, or the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the 3% on travel, and then, then a little bit more if you were to go and use their, uh, their, their travel portal to redeem your points or to transfer your points. So really, um, this card is kind of a mediocre card. It is a free card, so the 1, 2, 3% uh, is not bad, but there are certainly better credit cards for rewards out there. The way I see it, though, is uh, you're kind of just missing out maybe maybe one percent compared to competitive other competitive credit cards. So, uh, if you were to do the math, for example, let's say you spend thirty thousand dollars on your card in a year, right? And one percent of thirty thousand dollars is about three hundred dollars. So uh, that that's like kind of how much potentially you may be losing out, you know, two three hundred dollars on cash rewards if you were to choose to use this credit card for everything as opposed to a city cash uh, double cash rewards card. Um, not Siri, city. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but you know, to me, the, the fact that I have better visibility and the, the fact that I'm able to see all of my finances and all the categories and know exactly how much I'm spending, I feel like I'm going to be checking my finances with the wallet app much more than I would have with Mint or the other applications out there. Uh, I have a feeling that I'll probably actually spend less money if I'm const being constantly reminded how much I'm, I'm spending already. So we'll just have to see. Uh, and that's kind of why I want to give this Apple Card a go for maybe another five or six months to, to see where I'm at. Um, and then maybe I'll make a decision to see if I want to keep on using it. So in any case, if you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and perhaps consider subscribing for future tech videos. We'll see you in the next one. Superpower user out.